This week, I'm transforming a cramped, ugly kid's bedroom for less than the cost of a new bed. Hey everybody, Pete here from Northern Works. We've lived in this house now for a couple of years and in that time, the boys' bedroom has really started to feel less like a bedroom and more like a bunkhouse, you know, with two big beds, a bunch of mismatched furniture, uh, and really no amount of usable space for them. The youngest really liked the idea of a loft bed, and uh, miraculously they agreed on a theme for the room. But as I was looking for furniture, I realized that for the price of a new bed, I could probably transform the whole space. I started the transformation by painting one of the walls this deep ocean blue. Mm. And of course, I got my highly trained apprentices to help. I'm struggling to actually put any paint on this wall. So don't touch your face because you've got um, paint on, on your hands. While we clear out the old furniture, let me explain what the plan is. The room is a pretty good square size, at least for a classic British semi-detached house. But the challenge has always been to fit beds and storage for two growing boys and whatever else grows in a small boy's bedroom and still leave space to like walk around. So I designed this configuration where the eldest bed goes against the longest wall and then a loft bed is above and perpendicular to that and use the space underneath for storage which then leaves this good bit of floor space for whatever the kids want to get up to. Um, basket weaving, pottery, that sort of thing. With the space cleared and measured, I marked up my wood for cutting. I chose pine redwood from a local timber merchant and asked them to plane all sides as I don't have any tools for milling. It's the first time I've bought wood from a timber merchant rather than a big chain store and I'm super impressed. Overall, the timber is way better quality. There were a couple of splits developing in some of the planks. I was able to cut those out though with a bit of thought. Working with larger timbers definitely takes a bit of getting used to. Although, I do have plenty of space in my minimalist workshop to cut everything to length. And I used my circular saw. Before I started cutting, I switched out the stock blade for a one with a higher tooth count, which should help to reduce tear out. I also set my blade to, to match the depth of the planks. Despite all that, I got some pretty gnarly kickback on my first cut although I realised it was caused by the gap underneath the two planks. I figured it out for the rest. With the legs cut to length, I took them up to the room to see how they sat against the floor and the walls. I also measured out the recesses for skirting boards on the back of the faces. Hey, Future Pete here. Look, I've always said that this channel is all about learning and part of learning is making mistakes. And the mistake that you're about to see is a big one. So sharpen your pencils, take down some notes, and hopefully we can all learn something. Back in the workshop, I measured my recesses and made multiple cuts across the plank with a circular saw using a speed square to keep everything straight. The cuts make it simple to lever out the extra material and then I can just go back with a sharp chisel to smooth out the rest. I was happy with the first one so I sailed through two more of the legs before Done them all wrong. Every single one of them. To misquote Bob Ross, there are no mistakes, only soul crushing opportunities to learn something. I've done every single one of them wrong. In this case, that lesson is to mark your cuts clearly. I really was not excited about redoing everything, but fortunately, one of the apprentices had a better idea. Magic! Work! There we are. Nice. At this stage, I also drilled pilot holes for bolts that would attach into the walls to give the whole bed extra strength. I used a spade bit to create countersinks that were big enough to get a socket into, and then I drilled through the rest of the way with just a standard wood bit. 
Now, I really like to use organic methods in my builds, so I invited this wasp to help me mark out where to cut my joints. As you can see on this sketch, I designed the post to support the side and end rails using half flap joints to keep everything both strong and hopefully neat. Once I marked the joints, I used the same method as before to remove the waste. One thing you probably spotted here is that my circular saw blade is actually slightly off 90 degrees, which means all of my joints were also off. You'll see the issues it creates later on in the build, but it can be solved by setting your blade angle using a speed square or something similar every time you use the saw. With the legs done, I cut the side and end rails the length and added the corresponding half laps to each end. In the end, I had to use a handsaw to cut the joinery for the end rails as the joint was actually too deep to use the circular saw method. In hindsight, I think it would have been better to clamp them vertically and then do the cuts in the same way. We can now try our first dry fit in the room. It was pretty close, but there were definitely some areas for improvement. Those misaligned joint cuts meant that there were noticeable gaps in some places, and one of the side rails needed to be trimmed down slightly. I marked everything up, and we headed off for our ice cream. The next morning, I refined the joinery with some hand tools. Where there were more significant gaps, I trimmed slices from the side rail using a jigsaw and glued those pieces on. Once the glue was dry, I cleaned everything up with a knife and chisel. The next dry fit was much better. With everything all lined up, I made marks where I wanted to put dowels and screws and took measurements for the slat supports. I used the other bed as a reference for the slats. I then disassembled everything for what I hoped would be the last time. Once everything was laid flat, I could drill the dowel holes and the countersinks and pilots for the screws. I knew I didn't want to use glue, as I'm almost certain I'll need to remove this at some point down the line. And the dowels aren't really for strength, they're just more to make sure everything stays lined up when the screws go in. To be fair, the big bolts going into the walls take most of the strength. After that, the final assembly was basically a giant flat pack. Just line up the marks, pop in a dowel and screw tight. For the slat supports, I drilled countersinks at both ends, lightly screwed one end into the frame, before getting everything level and screwing the other end. I could then run along and fix the rest in place. One of the battens was pretty bowed, but it was easily fixed with good choices about alignment. And then once it was screwed in, it wouldn't matter. I decided to keep the slats simple and use this set from Ikea, which I knew would work with the existing mattresses. These dowels keep the slats in place at either end of the bed. I'm 
super happy with how this bed turned out. I've cleaned up some of the edges, I've given it a coat of paint, and I think it looks great. And do you know what? It's absolutely bomb proof. It's probably way too strong, if I'm completely honest. It's one of the things that I've learned through this project that I'm gonna take into future ones is things can be a lot less bulky than you probably originally think. And I've also learned, you know, with just a little bit of preparation, taking some extra steps has a massive impact on the outcome and result uh, of your final project. Now, in case you're wondering, don't worry, I am gonna add uh, a guardrail uh, in the next episodes and also a pretty cool way of actually getting into the bed. So make sure you subscribe so you know when that one comes out and you don't miss out. But as ever, even more than a subscribe, I would love it if you would leave me a comment. You know, what did you enjoy from this project? What tips can you give me so that my future projects go a bit more smooth? What are you working on at the moment? I'd love to hear all about it. Uh, whatever you tell me in the comments, it'd be great to say hi.